Okay, so first thing, setting up master section. So, uncut the desk. Volume, start off at minus 40. And that's pretty much it here for the master section. So, next thing is balancing the mix in Pro Tools. So just press play on the track. And you can kind of see with the master fader straight away. Level's not too bad there. It's kind of coming up around the zero mark, so might kind of end up pulling a few things back down. But anything that's um, labeled left and right, your best bet is to solo them and just pan them whatever way you think. So I'm going like 80 left and right with the keyboards here. And I'm just keeping an eye on the keyboard level here then that it's nice and balanced. Same with the guitars then, might bring in the guitars next after that. You can see these guitars aren't currently playing, so when I want them ones to bring them into the mix, I just have to highlight where they're actually playing and then just press play on that part and just balance them again with one another. So you might move one of them like 30 left, 30 right and balance them off one another. And then do a similar thing with the vocals, keep the main vocals down the middle and balance all the backing vocals, pan them 10, 20, 30 left and right. When you're done, just keep an eye on your overall mix level here, that it's still coming up to around the zero mark, and that it's not too hot or cold on one side or the other, that it's not too... At the moment, it's a bit right heavy there. So it means if I pull back this guitar a little bit, maybe pull back this keyboard a little bit, it'll balance out the left and the right a bit better. So don't spend too long with that, just get a nice mix, a bit of soloing, panning, balance, and navigation in Pro Tools and you'll get full marks for that. Creating the tracks is next so I'm just going to click on the reverb here because I want to create my tracks after that or even if you want to create it before it you can click on the last instrument in the track so command shift and N is the shortcut or else track new and five mono audio tracks. So again on the day we'll have a kick mic snare overhead hats overhead ride and a bass DI. Uh, so what after I've created them they're all highlighted together so this is the best time to group them. So I just press command and G to group them. So Command and G. If you forget the shortcut, you can also go up here to track and just click group there and that'll be the same thing. So I'm just going to use Command and G. All them guys are in the group, the ones I want to be there. Kick, snare, overhead hats, overhead ride and bass. I'm just going to rename the group, record group. And then I'm just going to check my globals here. Because we need to make sure record enable and input monitoring are part of the group. So I'm just going to make sure they're on. Now for the exam, I'm going to set them up so that they're always on but just in case it's worth having a look at globals here then just click ok and that's your tracks pretty much grouped so headphone mix is next um, we just want to select everything to put in the headphones so I've just held alt and clicked on the name of any track and then they all go white like that then I hold shift and alt and I go up to send A on any track holding shift and alt. I just set the output to be headphones stereo 9 and 10. And still holding shift and alt you just press pre-fader so that we get a pre-fader headphone mix which is an independent mix of these guys. So it's a separate mix for the drummer and for the bass player. I'm gonna still holding shift and alt set them all to zero. I suppose that's just kind of habit to do that. What we're going to do in a second is just use the shortcut Command Alt and H to mimic the mix I have here. If you wanted to do your own kind of mixing it though, holding Shift and Alt and just selecting them all to zero will just pretty much get them all off to a good starting point anyway. So with everything still highlighted, white, Command Alt and H, and we want to copy to send our volume and our pans. Now we put them in send A up here, so you just want to make sure send A is actually selected there and click OK. Now when I look on a track that has any panning done, if I look at the send for that, the same 
panning will be applied and the same level will be applied to that track. Pretty much stick on your headphones then, cut the desk, press play on the track and have a listen through your headphones and make sure everything sounds okay. If there's elements of the headphones you still think sound unbalanced, say for example you thought the main vocal, we're just making a video here to start to Judd. Uh, so if you thought the vocal was too loud, too low on the headphone mix, you can just individually go up to that and just adjust the vocal. So it should be fine if it mimics your mix here. It should be perfect up here, but like I said, if you do want to adjust anything, just go into each one separately. So that'll be the headphone mix. The best thing to do is give the drummer a listen to it as well. Just hand it to the drummer, ask them, are they happy with it? There will probably be a click track in the track we're doing for the studio exam. So generally drummers want louder click, so they may say to you turn up the click track. If that was the case, you just find the click track, go up to its send and turn it up a bit for them and then check that they're happy with that again. After that, we are patching the reverb. So reverb track is already set up here. It's got inputs 21 and 22 set on the reverb return. I'll tell you in the exam we want the output of the reverb to be 20. So Pro Tools output 20. So we pretty much patch in our three cables. Uh, so we're going Pro Tools output 20 into the input of the SPX90. So don't get kind of caught with putting the cable there. It's Wherever anything is labelled, it's right above or below wherever it's labelled. So the input of the SPX90 is this one. And the outputs of the SPX90 go back to Pro Tools inputs 21 and 22, which are these guys here. So the right goes into 22 and the left goes into 21. And then we'll just test the reverb and the vocal. So, solo the vocal in Pro Tools, go to send B, because send A is obviously already being used. So send B, output 20, and then just press play and turn the vocal up an adequate amount. So I cut the desk a second ago just to hear the headphone mix, so again I'm just going to uncut that so I can hear the vocal here. So you're really just checking is it working and then I'll ask you to maybe apply a little bit to a few other instruments like I might say when we get the drums in later I might ask you to put a bit of reverb on the snare mic on the drums so that it would be a case of if I ask you to do that you just go to send B on the snare output 20 and you just apply a little bit of reverb to the snare so we might just put two or three instances of reverb on certain instruments uh, next is getting in your mic level so what you'll do first is record enable and input monitor your instrument tracks kick snare overhead left overhead right and bass and then just navigate those tracks we want to bring them over here in front of us so we just press close and bring the kick drum right over to here. Press input on all the tracks that are record enabled. And make sure gains are turned down initially. Now I'll tell you in the exam that there's two condenser mics on the overheads and there's a active DI box. So you'll need to turn on phantom power on channels three, four and five to get them working. So the bass player is out here, so the best thing to do is get the bass level in first. So you pretty much just ask the bass player to start playing. And while they're playing, you turn up the gain. And you can watch the level coming in here and kind of get it between 10 and 6, you know, up around this area. So you can either watch the level here or you can watch it coming in on Pro Tools on the actual bass track and that's pretty much it for the bass. 
maybe just play the song for them with the bass and make sure that they're able to hear their bass in the room. Obviously you want to take off solo on the vocal just so they'll be able to hear the song playing. So maybe give them a quick test to see can they hear their bass amongst all these instruments. Bring the drummer inside then, show them the headphone amp, show them where they turn up their volume. And you can press monitoring on the touchscreen here on the desk. Turn up your talk back to around 2 o'clock. And then when they're inside and they have their headphones on, press talk and just ask them to give you a thumbs up if they can hear you. If they can, just ask them to start playing the whole drum kit. So you pretty much take off talk back and as they're playing the whole drums you go through each one, one by one. Gaining up the kick, gaining up the snare, gaining up the overhead hats and gaining up the overhead ride, again watching your levels. On the meters you can do a bit of panning with the drums, pan the overhead left some way to the left, pan the way overhead right to the right some amount. Usually keep it the same, 70-70 if you're going to do it that way. And again, you might want to like balance the drums a little bit. So you can see if I turn them down, everything is going. I might not want that to happen. So if I want to take them out of the group to balance a bit better, I can just click record group over here. We'll turn off the group and then that way I can turn the overheads down a little bit and I can turn the snare down a little bit if I need to. So you're just removing their them from their group for a few seconds to rebalance the drums and you can turn back on the group after that again so that would be pretty much your drum levels and your bass levels in um that should be pretty much it what we'll do is a test take first so you can just pretty much press enter on the keyboard tell the musician talk to them in the exam you'll have a counting for the um the track it'll be like a two bar counting i'd imagine so tell them there's a two bar count and we're just doing a practice run. Take off talk back. Press three to record. And it'll start recording. They'll play for like 30 seconds. That's how long the song will be. And once they're done, you'll talk to the bass player out here. Ask them were they happy with their mix. If they ask you to turn up or down anything, you do it from these faders. So if they said to you all the vocals are too loud, you'd pull down all the vocals a bit here. And then press play in it again and see are they happy. If they're happy the second time, that's fine. If they ask you to turn something else up and down, you adjust it. If they want the guitars up, you bring the guitars up. Play it again for them. Make sure they're happy with everything. <coughs> Don't forget when you play back, you'll have recorded that practice take. When you play it back in order to hear the drums and bass, you'll have to take off input monitoring or else you won't hear them. So you have input monitoring on while you're recording. You take it off when you're playing back or else they won't be able to hear the drums and the bass playing back. Same with the drummer, talk to them. At this stage you'll be able to hear them when they talk back to you. Ask them are they happy with the mix. Maybe turn up your master volume a bit so you can hear them. They might say I need more bass in my headphones. So if they need more bass you go to the bass up here and you turn up the amount of bass they're getting. They might say they need less keys. You go over here to the keys and turn down the keys. You know whatever they want. And again then just play the track for them. Make sure they're happy with the mix. And when everyone is happy to go again, you just do a playlist. So I'm just flicking back to the screen here, pressing command equals. I go over to this little arrow next to the group, click, well, you just click on it first and then you click new and they'll all change to dot one. Press enter again to go back to the start of the session. Ask the drummer and the bass player they're ready to go. Tell them it's two bar counting again and pretty much press three on the numerical keypad to record again and just do one more take. Cool, and that is it.